anyway, but back in the days people did, did this a lot and those birch trees they were called as Johannes Koivu, the Johannes birch tree and they were decorated with ribbons and flowers and fresh leaves and so on and just in general uh, houses they were cleaned and rubbed and saunas they were cleaned and stables they were cleaned for Johannes and they were decorated with fresh flowers and uh, these reds that were made from leaves and they were all over and it was all very very pretty I, I can imagine and uh, children they did lots of reds uh, for their heads flower reds and they were also given to animals so they might put some flowers to the cow horns and for the horses also little reds for the horses so I imagine it, have, it has been very pretty <laughs> and uh, just to celebrate summer and life with those flowers and each flower and each tree they also all have different pagan meanings i've been thinking about doing another series maybe in finnish about different flowers and trees and their symbolism you can't do that in english because uh, the biological vocabulary in english i'm not very good at that but i will put the subtitles don't you worry and there's lots of these a summer magic related to Johannes, obviously, and one very common spell was to collect nine different kinds of white flowers, and it also could have been five, seven, or twelve white flowers, depending depending on the source. Then you would put them under your pillow, and during the night you would see your future spouse in your dreams. I used to do that a lot when I was a child. I can't remember my dreams. <laughs> Maybe I should do it again. Anyway, it's, it's a quite nice, nice spell. And another very common one was to go to the forest and try to find um, a spring or a well, a little spring or a well in the forest. And if you would stare there in the midsummer solstice or Johannes night, you would see your future spouse there. So there was lots of that kind of magic going on. And uh, bonfires, that's the most common Finnish Johans tradition that still lives today. And the bonfire, that goes all the way back to the shamanic times, like 10,000 years ago when there were first people in the area, what is now known as Finland. And those uh, people who had like shamanistic worldview. And that's how long the bonfire tradition is. And it was uh, connected to Ukko as well, because Ukko obviously was the god of fire. Bonfires, they were lit to get rid of the bad and evil spirit, spirits, but also as uh, as a symbol of abundance for the people. And it, the whole idea of the bonfire and the Ukko and the thunder, it actually goes all the way back to the time when people did not worship human-shaped figures as their gods but animal shaped figures as their gods and archetypes and if you're familiar with Finnish and Finno-Baltic mythology especially there's a huge amount of stories about birds and um, uh, Finnish and the Baltic countries there is this long old old expression to describe but Finno-Baltic people as the people of the water bird because there's so many myths about different birds and birds were very holy for the people. Before Ukko there was the thunderbird. There was the thunderbird which was the eagle, <laughs> uh, Kotka in Finnish. And uh, if you have seen eagles, they are massive birds, they are huge. Eagle in, at least in Finland, eagle was seen as the omen of thunder because the eagle, it flies in the summer quite often before the thunder comes because that's the time when it prays. Before people worshipped these human shaped gods they worshipped the animal gods and the thunderbird was, was one of the most respected bird gods you could say that. A thunderbird that is connected to bonfire and to the story of the phoenix which is obviously extremely old story and the thing is with the eagle eagle can actually create themselves again from the ashes literally because when an eagle gets old and it gets very tired and their feathers are going off they can actually choose to die eventually 
or they can choose to go through this rebirth process. That is when they land and they will pluck away their old feathers and grow again new ones, new tail and everything. And that actually extends the life of the eagle and in a way they are reborn again. Nature is amazing. And this is uh, where the whole myth of the phoenix bird comes from. And uh, this is why eagles were uh, worshipped as the thunder gods during the shamanistic times in Finland and around the world. Because you can find this myth all over and pretty much in every single culture where there is a thunder god, their symbol is the eagle. For example, in ancient Greece, eagle was the symbol of Zeus. Even more if you go to the Native American cultures, there's a huge amount of stories about the thunderbirds, the eagle. So I always find this myth very, very interesting and very empowering. But that's uh, how eagle, Ukko and the bonfires are connected together. You can watch the full episode for free here on YouTube. Link is in the description.